LinkedIn is a social media website where I guess business people talk business or something. I don't know. I don't use it. All I know about it is it's full of absolute weapons. So today we're going to be taking a look at some of the best examples of LinkedIn lunatics. I proposed to my girlfriend this weekend. Here's what it taught me about business to business sales. Oh, I hope that's a joke. I hope that's a joke. Can you can you view LinkedIn posts if you don't have like an account? You can't. Oh, that's disappointing. This comes from Darren who apparently is uh, his business is growing your business and brand on LinkedIn with community. I mean, I've never you is this is this like a thing I, I mean i guess it is it's a business website obviously duh i used to think if i sold my company for one million dollars i'd be made for life now i realize selling for 10 million dollars <laughs> isn't even enough to retire on guys let's spare a thought for those that are retired on 10 million dollars or less thoughts and prayers go out to you guys before you go crazy let's do the math say you're 14 sell your company for 10 million dollars in new york city who retires at 40 like, even if you have loads of money you're just gonna be dead bored but you can retire at 40 on 10 million dollars maybe not in central new york city though start by deducting two million dollars in federal cap gains 1.5 million in state cap gains a hundred thousand dollars in fees you're already left with six million four hundred thousand shit that's nothing oof that went quickly oh yes it did is that all taxes are in america fucking hell i pay more than that i think I don't know. Then let's say you want to buy a house with it. Average home price in New York City is 746,451. That's very specific. <laughs> Who's listed a price that specific? Okay, that's that's fine. But now you're down to 5.6 million. Still a lot, right? But you still got 30 plus years left to live. I could be just fine living on 5.6 million dollars for, <laughs> for 30 years. I mean, how let's do the maths. That's like that's, that's over, that's nearly $200,000 a year. You're fine. So take into account average cost of living, $48,912 per year, yearly property. Oh yeah, that's the thing in America. That's how I get you in America. We just pay one off stamp duty here. You have to pay yearly property tax. Is it, is it really that much? On a property that's 746,000, 14 grand a year. That seems like a lot. Yearly property tax is $14,000 a year. That doesn't, that just doesn't sound right. Miscellaneous expenses, $25,000 a year. Oh yeah, you know, if, if your fridge breaks or something, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta shell out that 25 grand. And after that big exit, you're left with $46,088 a year left to live on. Yeah, after you've accounted for all expenses, what are you fucking, what are you talking about? Oh, that's a single person in New York, not taking into account kids, wife, family. I remember as a kid dreaming of being a millionaire. Turns out it isn't as fun as it used to be. Oh, shut up, you nerd. PS, has the American dream died? What needs to be done to change things? <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you talking about? You just said you can retire on that. If you want to retire and your wife and kids can't live off that, Send your wife to work. Send your kids down the mine. I don't know. I did a consulting call today with a 33-year-old guy who makes $150,000 a year at a fully remote job. 30 to 40 hours a week, two kids plus wife. This is a really tough spot to... <laughs> this is a really tough spot to be in. Is it? Makes 2K a month more than he spends every month. I mean, that doesn't sound too bad. Zero chance at long-term wealth, but too easy and profitable to leave. Golden handcuffs. I mean... What, what the fuck are you talking about? Zero chance at long-term wealth. That's an extra 24 grand a year if he saves and invests. He's got that lying around and making interest and stuff. Christ, what do you expect him to have 10K a month extra income? It takes a serious level of ambition to get out of this situation and go buy or start a company. Yeah, guys, if you're only saving 2,000 a month, quit your job right now and go and buy a business. It's hard to get excited about scraping and fixing toilets or power washing sidewalks when you make $75 an hour at your day job. I mean, yeah, that, that sounds pretty nice, $75 an hour. And I, I, I mean, I'm not sure about the power washing thing, but the fixing toilets, that's a whole new learning curve. You can't, no one can just fix a toilet. You have to learn how to do that. And it's impossible to feel comfortable buying a company. <laughs> If you don't start, but lower... Sorry, what? And it's impossible to feel comfortable buying a company if you don't start out lower and work your way up. Yeah, because not everyone has the money lying around to buy a company. Ugh. With that stuff, that isn't exciting when you get a taste of decent money. Difficult stuff. It's not. <laughs> CEO wondering why people are so rude. Hey, Tim, if anyone else was hoping to connect with you for our platform, Meet Magic. If you attend the meeting, we'll donate $300 to a charity of your choice. Let me know if you're open to learning more. That is one thing I absolutely hate. When people People try and like guilt you into doing something by being like, oh yeah, if you do it, I'll donate money to charity. Cause you look like a dick if you say no, right? No, thank you. Have a good day. Any particular reason why doing a good deed doesn't resonate with you, Tim? Shut up, Carl. He's basically gone, hey man, you, do, do you want to use our platform to meet with someone? And if you do, we'll donate $300 to charity. And he's gone, oh no, it's, it's all right, man. Don't worry. Is there a reason why you're being a dick? Is there a reason why you're taking money away from starving children? Seriously, what the fuck? You contact me unsolicited to try and flog some product that is not even 
yours. And when I politely say, no, you give me this shit, go fuck yourself, you flog. I'm the founder. I am 90% of the stock. I have key executives and shareholders. Oh, shut up. I'm giving you an opportunity. Does Jenny know you speak to people like this? Represent? Oh my God, shut up, Carl. You absolute nerd. Oh, and of course he's made a LinkedIn post crying about this. Shut up. I don't like this guy. Oh, what's it? Founder, philanthropist, and CEO. Ugh, shut up. One million dollars AR. One point five million dollars each charity. Yeah, good for you, pal. Good for you. Fucking guilt tripping people into using your platform. They're making a post crying about it. Christ. Sorry, that this is just just annoys me. I'm gobsmacked that any human being can be like this. Never mind a government worker. Dying on an idea with nothing from nothing is never easy. Meet Magic is offering something that changes people's lives and fixes a broken system as a busy leaders. Yes, as a busy leaders. Well done, Carl. Oh, good grammar. We know it's never easy finding time to give back, to demonstrate that we do not take your time lightly. Why is he Why is he splitting every fucking like half sentence up by like a space here? We make a significant contribution to a charity of your choice. Lots of leaders say no, and that's a chance for us to get the message right. A lot of leaders say yes and give 45 minutes once a month or once a fortnight. Lots of leaders say yes and completely ghost us, making it really hard. And then this. I wasn't going to give this negativity any airtime, but it's important for my team's mental health and mine that you... <laughs> That if you hear from us with an opportunity to give back, it's a very, very lucky opportunity, a privilege to feel good and do good. People always remember how you made them feel. Oh my God. I will never use meat magic in my life. What the fuck? This is psychopathic. You told this, you basically called this guy an arsehole because he was like, oh no, I'm all right. I'm, uh, I'm good. I don't want to, I don't want to do that. You prick. God, that one's actually annoyed me. <laughs> I interviewed a candidate recently and she had her kids running around. Red flag, not for me. Ah, oh, good for you. You're so liberal. She called me ahead of time and said she needed to reschedule her interview because her kids have been sent home from school. I told her that if she is comfortable keeping the interview, I do not mind if she has kids in the background. If not, I am happy to reschedule. She kept the same time and did a great job even with her kids in the room. Life happens. We are all humans juggling thousands of things. Communication is the key in many situations and this candidate handled it perfectly. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just a copy pasta. <laughs> Sorry, what? I don't shake women's hands. There, I ripped the band-aid off and said it. Call me old fashioned, you're probably right. Call me a misogynist, names will never hurt me, but you're wrong. Physical touch with someone of the opposite gender is something my wife and I reserve exclusively for each other. Oh, okay, I also hug my mum. Whoa, hands off there. Someone might think you're trying to fuck your mum. And smother my six daughters with hugs. You have six daughters? Increases intimacy with the love of my life, definitely. Are you getting bricked up like when you shake someone's hand? <laughs> intimate act shaking someone's hand. This is a post about marriage tips. No. It was hard to get a law firm job when my interviewers discovered that I don't shake women's hands. Yeah, because that's really weird. It's like, what, so you shake men's hands but not women's hands? That's that's really strange. I'd always hope for male interviewers. Again, not for misogynistic reasons, but because it would avoid inevitable awkwardness of someone reaching out to shake my hand and my having to explain why I couldn't extend my hand back. I totally get it. I wouldn't want to reach out my hand and have the other person leave me hanging either. First impressions are important and this is a good way to flunk the first impression test. Plus, they're concerned about how I could ever build a book of business with this perceived handicap. Mate, you're not handicapped. You're just weird. To be fair, I'm, I'm not a fan of handshaking a lot of the time. I prefer a fist bump. I, I never go in for a fist bump. I don't feel as I'm cool enough to do that. But if someone meets me with a fist bump, I'm happier than if they went in with a handshake. Because if they're going with a handshake, you don't know if they're going in for one of these, one of these, or like a, like, a, like a formal handshake. It's awkward. The pandemic helped because for a few years nobody was touching, but now thankfully we're back to our pre-pandemic greeting practice. Which is good for everybody except folks who are interviewing for jobs and like me won't shake hands with everybody. I think it would be less weird if you just didn't shake hands with like men as well. Because if you like shake a man's hand and you're like, oh no, sorry, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna shake a hand with that woman. And people are just gonna think, okay, he's he's odd. He's like misogynistic, whatever. LinkedIn, he sculpted Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> from wood and now he's waiting for your feedbacks. Let's appreciate this artwork. I love how his arm is, is like, it's like that. You can't, that's, <laughs> it's so obviously AI. I just learned about LinkedIn lunatics on Reddit when one of my connections became a target. Oh no. I'm not gonna say who and I highly recommend not looking this up on Reddit unless you want a reminder of how 99% of people spend their time on the internet. Wasted. Matt, you are writing a thread about the subreddit. Like, <laughs> 
I've heard this subreddit is like the worst thing to ever happen to these sorts of people on LinkedIn. Wasted scrolling through trash talk to feel better about themselves. No, it's just really, it's really funny. Ridiculing content creators. I would really call these people content creators. Like being pretentious online and writing bullet points is a great content. Ridiculing content creators because they're scared of creating anything of their own. Oh, of course. Going down rabbit holes and what other people are doing instead of researching what they could be doing while the other 1% spends their time creating. Regardless of insecurities, feeling cringe fear of other people's opinions. Hey Redditors, if that's what you're called. <laughs> you're worthy enough to help people too. I get it, it's scary and you're afraid of what people think. No, Redditors are not worthy of helping people. Do it anyway, or you can continue wasting your precious time trash talking from the nosebleeds. Yep, that sounds like more fun. To everyone creating and posting content, remember, you're the 1%. You're a creator, not a consumer. You know, you're consuming. Sure. Like, stop trying to act different. You're not the 1%. What, you, what the fuck are you doing? You're on LinkedIn! Anything negative the other 99% have to say is because they're own insecurity. And it's not. It's just because it's funny. Respond with like, has she, has she finished this off with a, a picture of a quote of hers? Oh no, it's not her quote. It's Theodore Roosevelt. My favorite thing is when people like make quotes of themselves and then like they, like name themselves. He's not the critic who counts. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena. Of course, the arena. The, the fighting arena of LinkedIn. Fantastic. There was a sadness I felt standing behind this woman in line at McDonald's last week. I watched as she took her small drink and cheeseburger to a nearby booth and sat down alone. I was in a hurry as I had a client meeting, but I did something I'd never done before. I asked her if she would like some company and she replied, why yes, I'd love that. We spoke for 45 minutes about everything. Her husband who she lost last year, her kids who hardly visit, her company which has been struggling recently. The tears in her eyes reflected the deep loneliness she felt. She reminded me of my grandma. I think I can help. We signed her up for our 12 month retainer and we're going to be working on getting her company back where it needs to be. I stopped at McDonald's for a £5.99 and lunch and left with a client worth 100 k Always be ready. Is this satire? If this isn't satire, that's fucking crazy. I have a feeling it isn't satire. Early bird catches the worm and it's, uh, she's, you can't do that. You put your hands back on the wheel, put your phone away. You're going to crash, you idiot. Right, so we got Andy who apparently has $4 trillion under management and is the prime minister of revenue. I'm looking up his company. Is that a real thing. I can't tell. He seems to be, this seems to be a real person and not like a satire account. Like there's articles involving this man. My phone rang immediately after I closed the Zoom. I had just given a presentation to a customer's entire executive team and now the CEO was calling me. He changed the way you think. We consider you a dotted line to our team. Thank you. In the hour I spent with their team, zero seconds were spent selling Clary, which I'm guessing is his company, I think. The session was entirely focused on the best practices for running revenue and discussing where they were strong and where they were weak. This is the power of a strong point of view. This is the difference between selling someone something and creating a shared vision with them. I relish these moments with customers. It's endlessly rewarding to help companies think critically about their most important business process, revenue. Now, off to the next customer call. Good for you, Fab. Good for you. What? So we've got Mauricio, who is apparently an elite coach for men. And he asks, can a wife refuse sex to her husband and why? Yes. Yes, she can. <laughs> oh, what, what are you talking about? You should not be an elite coach for men if you're having to ask this question. They go, hmm. But why? I had a strip club reach out to us for pest control. I rejected the account straight away. Why? Because I employ a team of technicians that happens to consist completely of men who are married. Do you think there's just gonna be like girls up there dancing while you're, while you're like spraying pesticides? And I care more about their marriage. They're not gonna be there. And I care more about their marriages and their personal integrity than I do about making a few extra dollars. Oh, good for you, good for you. Oh, look at me, I'm so good. I save marriages by not taking more money. You're not saving, like, they're not gonna be there. And they're not gonna be, oh my god, the man with the pesticide. Oh, you're so hot. Fuck me right now. Call me a prude or a bigger or mean. I don't care. And my wife doesn't care. My three sons don't care. My two daughters don't care. My grandchildren don't care. My great grandchildren don't care. I could go on. There are many things more important than money. One of them is a good reputation. Just this fucking pest can wait. Just, just get rid of the pests. Why are you trying to take some weird moral high ground here? Oh god. Every so often, a concerned citizen likes to inform me that yet another one of my posts has found its way to the r slash LinkedIn lunatics credit. 
credit thread. Credit, yeah. Doesn't it bother you to have haters? Oh, honey. If they're talking, it's because they're still watching. They're, if they're watching, that's a fan babe. Yeah, okay, all right. There's She's attached a photo of her in the bath for some reason. Honestly, I am more concerned with the DMs from early stage. S I don't know, it's SDRs telling me my framework helped them book a meeting or land a job. The rest is noise. Fair enough. Okay. I didn't expect to be in the gym until 11 p.m. last night. I came in at 9 p.m. just wanting to walk on the treadmill and then go home. Why would you go to the gym just to walk on the treadmill? Go for a walk. People were sprinting on the treadmill. Yeah, that's because that's the general idea of a treadmill. Laughing and lifting gigantic barbells. Suddenly my little relaxing walk seems silly. I had to keep yeah because who goes to the gym just to walk on the treadmill and then go home go for what, go for a walk sorry that's more entertaining than on a, a treadmill are so boring go for a walk go see stuff so i smiled at the folks going all out then i lifted weights until i couldn't lift anymore then i started running on the treadmill promising myself i wouldn't stop until the woman running next to me stopped as well five miles later she finally stopped and we nodded at each other with respect yeah that happened and everyone cheered after she wiped down her machine and left the gym i finally let myself cool down we push ourselves harder when we compare ourselves to others. We make ourselves keep up when other people have high performance. That's why my guiding principle when choosing jobs is to work with people who I respect and can push me to be even better every day. Smart and strong people encourage us to be smarter and stronger too. Today, I am tired but fulfilled. Oh, well, good for you. I'm glad you ran on the treadmill. Spends two to four hours every day on LinkedIn during his family's Disney World trip. Just got back from Disney World and you had no clue. Oh my God, how could you? Yes, that is what everyone is saying, Nat. Everyone's going, how how could you go away to Disney World? Don't you have a business to run? Don't you have a post on LinkedIn to make? I was gone for six days and not one of you noticed. <laughs> no, Nat, you don't realize. People were running around LinkedIn like headless chickens going, where is Nat? Where is Nat? Is this a flex? Maybe. Just maybe it is, but it's a message. You can do whatever the hell you want if you are free. Literally anyone could take six days off, mate. Me, I chose to go to Disney and work as needed. Here's what I did. Since I get up two hours earlier than my family every day, for three to four hours each morning, I did my normal LinkedIn biz routine. Yeah, all right, that's a great use of your holiday time. Spending three to four hours on LinkedIn. Sick. The day starts 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Theme park madness all day. I might take five to 10 minutes sporadically to check stuff. I even hit the gym a few times times in six days. I'm gonna be real. If you go to Disney World, you do not need to hit the gym. That is a workout in of itself. And it's dinner time. No holds barred. Movie in the room. Sleepy time. I'm allowed to leave the parks before 10 p.m. because I'm not psychotic like my wife and kids who go from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Yeah, that's psychotic. You know, going on holiday to do the thing you went on holiday <laughs> to do. Did I do everything I normally would had I not worked? 100% I didn't miss one big moment, one family photo, one nice Star Wars shot, one crazy face on a roller coaster, one magic moment at Hollywood Studios, one <laughs> Magic Kingdom Disney character greeting. One memorable experience at Animal Kingdom. One delicious food from Epcot's Food and Wine Festival. If you want to work six months just to get a week reprieve when the rest of the world is vacationing at the same time, that's your right. But come on, man. How, why has he done these in bullet points? One thing I hate about it, like LinkedIn stuff, is they bullet point everything. There's no reason to bullet point this. But come on, man. How is this not better? Zero pressure when I came home. No one even knew I was gone. And I get do this four to five times a year plus weekend trips. This is true retirement. Retirement, folks. I mean, it's not retirement because you still worked and it's truly possible. I know retirement's possible. And he's got a picture with Chewbacca to prove it. Like and subscribe. Oh my God, I realize my desk has been slightly higher this whole time. So I just look short at this whole video. Like and subscribe for a six day Disney trip where you will have to work half the time.